वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू जी डी सी क्लासेस टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी पार्ट वन ऑफ टैबलेट एज वी नो दैट दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक अंडर फार्मास्यूटिक्स सो लेट्स सी वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू सी अंडर पार्ट वन ऑफ टैबलेट सो द कंटेंट एंड द टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन टूडे इज डेफिनेशन देन वील सी वट आर दी एडवांटेजेस एंड वट आर द डिसएडवांटेजेस एंड इन ब्रीफ वी आर गोइंग टू सी वट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ टैबलेट्स अलॉन्ग विथ इट्स डिस्क्रिप्शन सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ द इंट्रोडक्शन नाउ वी ऑल नो दैट टैबलेट इज अ यूनिट डोसेज फॉर्म द एंटायर डोज इज प्रेजेंट इन अ सिंगल टैबलेट सो इट इज नोन एज यूनिट डोसेज फॉर्म इट इज कॉम्पैक्ट एंड वेरी कन्वेंशनल मोस्ट ऑफ द पेशेंट दे they are used to this uh, tablet uh, as compared to parenteral or any other dosage form so according to usp and according to ip so according to usp tablet is defined as compressed solid dosage form whatever the blend will be there that will be compressed using compression machine it contains the medicament with or without excipients sometimes the dose is very high that uh, diluents and other fillers are not required in that case with or without excipients so that entirely depends on the formulation so this is the definition according to usp now according to ip indian pharmacopeia pharmaceutical tablets they are solid flat or biconvex biconvex means they they will have some bulging surface on both the side so that is a biconvex dishes unit dosage forms prepared by compressing a drug or a mixture of drug with or without diluents so either the diluents may be present or diluents may not be present and depending upon the dose of the tablets if dose is sufficient then the tablet may not require the diluent now next is advantages now let's see what are the advantages of the tablet so they are the unit dosage form so they offer the greatest capabilities of all dosage form for the greatest dose precision and the least content variability unlike solution for example you have to take 2 ml of solution then the variability will be more some patient may take 1.8 ml 2.2 ml like that but in case of tablet the entire dose is present in a single tablet and that will directly go into the patient body so the variability is less their cost is lowest unlike your parenteral ones where you require sterilization and everything process tablet is having the lower cost they are the lightest and most compact of all dosage form like it is not having much weight also the containers and strip packaging blister packaging they are all having light weight only so they, they are the lightest and most compact of other dosage form they are in general the easiest and cheapest to package ship of all dosage form they may provide the greatest ease of swallowing they lend themselves to certain special release profile for for example enteric or delayed release this we are going to see in depth in uh, enteric coated uh, or delayed release tablet they are bet better suited to large scale production than unit than other unit oral forms they have the best combined properties of physical mechanical and microbiological stability they are not uh, susceptible to microbiological attack or something so they are having greatest stability now always there are pros and cons of the any dosage form so some disadvantages are there like some drug resist compression for example if if the drug is having very high bulkiness then it is difficult to compress because if you try to compress it will the powder will move out so in in that case the difficulty is to compress the blend so some drug resists the compression into dense compact because of their amorphous or flocculent nature if there is very much amorphous or flocule like very high bulkiness then they are difficult to compress so this is the disadvantage drugs with poor weighting uh, we all know that whenever tablet will come in contact with the gastrointestinal fluid it has to get dissolved in the gastrointestinal fluid for which the weighting properties are important so if the drug is having poor weighting then there become a challenge to formulate it into a dosage form if it is having a slow dissolution profile intermediate to large dosage for example very high dose is there then the tablet weight tablet size this all parameters will increase 
optimum absorption high in the gastrointestinal tract or any combination of these features may be difficult to formulate into tablet next are beta testing drugs now tablets we are taking by oral route so if the if your tablet is having beta taste then it becomes difficult to formulate into tablet because the patient will not take it easily the patient will have the difficulty in taking that tablets if it is having some objectionable odor if odor is coming then also the patient may not take the tablets or the, or the drugs that are sensitive to oxygen or atmospheric moisture means if a tablet is having some degradation property in case of in presence of moisture or in presence of oxygen but this can be overcome by like coating are there moisture coating some polymers we are using to protect the tablet so these require the encapsulation or entrapment prior to compression if feasible or practical or the tablet may require coating so these all these disadvantages can be overcome now we will see about the types and the classes of tablets so first is tablet ingested orally means which are taken by the oral route so they can be a compressed tablet the conventional one next it can be a multiple compressed enteric coated then comes sugar coated film coated chewable tablets so these are the tablets which are taken orally now there is a difference ingested orally means that will entirely go from your oral cavity into your gastrointestinal tract but the ta tablets used in the oral cavity just you will place these tablets in the oral cavity not you will take it as a oral route so if you place in the oral cavity there can be a buccal from buccal route it will go buccal means between your gum and your cheeks so your sublingual means below the tongue sublingual sub means below lingual means tongue lozenges dental cones so these are just placed in the oral cavity but not taken from the oral cavity into, into the gastrointestinal tract so their route of absorption is entirely different next is by other routes like implantation are there vaginal tablets are there this we are going to see all the tablets then effervescent tablets which are used to prepare solutions dispensing tablets hypodermic and tablet triturates so let's start with the tablets which are ingested orally that will go from your oral cavity from mouth to the gastrointestinal tract stomach small intestine large intestine so the first a very conventional is the compressed tablet which is a standard uncoated tablets standard uncoated tablets and they are made by compression and by employing any of the three methods so there are the different methods so first is weight granulation it can be formed by double compaction or it can be formed by direct compression so these are the different methods so they are intended to provide rapid disintegration and drug release so basic uh, intention behind is a, to produce a rapid release and rapid disintegration these drugs are typically water insoluble and include such therapeutic categories as the antacid and adsorbents so this was about the compressed tablet now next are multiple compressed the name itself suggests multiple compressed tablets for example to separate physical or chemically incompatible ingredients are there for example see layered tablet and compression coated tablets so in that first is tablet within a tablet so one tablet will be in a tablet and the next is tablet within a tablet and then within a tablet so these are the uh, this is the second type so these are prepared by like multiple compressed tablet because to separate physically or chemically incompatible ingredients now here you can see one it is in blue color the other one is in white color so whatever ingredients if they if mixed then they will produce some incompatibility if such is the case then you can separate it out in the two different layers so that is a multiple compressed tablet or to produce a repeat action or prolonged action for example one drug will release and after its completion the second will release so you want some uh, delayed release or a prolonged action for a certain period of time then you can formulate it as this one chewable tablets the name itself suggests they are intended to be chewed in the mouth prior to swallowing and are not intended to be swallowed intact 
so you don't have to swallow intact and unlike that compressed tablet but you have to chew the tablets and then swallow the most common chewable tablet on the market is the chewable aspirin tablet so the most common is the aspirin tablet and it is you intended for use in children so mostly aspirin tablet it is used this is the marketed one which is used for use in ch children many antacid tablet products are of the chewable type many antacid are of the chewable type bitter or foul tasting drugs are not good candidates because because we are going to chew the tablets the patient is going to take so bitter or foul tasting drugs cannot be a good candidate for this type of tablet next is sugar and chocolate coated tablets so they permit separation of incompatible ingredients between coating and a core so whatever the incompatible ingredients will be present either you can separate like you one you can put it in a coating one the other will be in the core one so that's how the separation of the incompatible ingredients will takes place so it is widely used in preparing many multivitamin and multivitamin mineral combinations so these two so this is the example chewable multivitamin tablets next is film coated tablets the name itself suggests some film is given to coat the part of the drug so it is developed as an alternative procedure to the preparation of coated tablets in which the drug was not required in the coating for example it is used in the preparation of coated tablets whatever the coating will be given to the tablet but the coating will not contain the drug in which drug was not required in the coating but the drug is present in the core part so the composition employed one or more polymers more than one polymers or a plasticizer and a surfactant to facilitate the spreading it is used in the film coating now what are the polymers that are used so that is hpm hpc and hpmc hydroxy propyl cellulose and hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose so these are the polymers that are used next very important is a 30% ethyl cellulose dispersion what is 30% ethyl cellulose dispersion it is marketed under the trade name aqua coat 30% ethyl cellulose is marketed under the trade name aqua code by fmc corporation so these are the types of film coated tablets remember 30% ethyl cellulose is nothing but aqua coat and it is by the fmc corporation so generally film coating is given if you want to protect your drug from moisture or some oxygen then we are giving film coating next is repeat action tablets next is repeat action tablet so the core tablet is usually coated with the shellac so this is uh, a polymer shellac is a polymer either it is coated with shellac or enteric polymer enteric means some uh, the polymer which will dissolve in the intestine or which will dissolve at the intestinal ph and it will release the drug so that is enteric so that it will not release the drug load in the stomach so if you want to protect the drug from the stomach or acidic environment then we will give enteric coating so that it will release and dissolve into the intestine so the second dose of the drug is then added in the sugar coating so first is the enteric one next is the sugar coating so first in the enteric next in the sugar it can be either in the solution in the sugar syrup or as a part of a dusting powder added for rapid coat build up so this uh, either you can add in the dusting powder or in the sugar syrup so the second dose of the drug will be in the sugar coating so first you will add in the enteric afterwards in the sugar so in one tablet the repeat action can be observed so hence it is known as repeat action tablets next are the controlled release tablets so the controlled release products are expected to be beads in a capsule so it is like a beads one which are present in the capsule relatively few sustained release oral products have been in the tablet form so basically it is in the capsule but very less are in the tablet one so the highly successful sustained release theophylline product 
of the key pharmaceutical is theodor remember this one theodor is nothing but a example of sustained release product next is the oros product of alza corporation oros product of alza corporation it is the another example of sustained release tablet product okay it is a sustained release tablet product and it is a zero order zero order means its rate of reaction will not be dependent on what is the concentration present it is independent of the initial concentration and one more thing theodor contains the drug theophylline theodor contains the drug theophylline remember this one it is based on the osmotic pressure as the rate controlling process so how this controlled release occur based on the osmotic pressure next is delayed action and enteric action so delayed means the contents which are not released into the stomach a delay after some time uh, it is occurring after some time means when the tablet will pass from the stomach into the intestine so that is a delayed and it is also known as the enteric coated so it is intended to release a drug after some time delay or after the tablet has passed through one part of the gi tract into another for example drug is absorbing more from intestine but in the acidic if it is getting precipitated then you can give a enteric coating so that it will not release into the stomach it will be intact but as soon as it will complete its transit time into the stom uh, in the stomach and then it will go into the intestine at that time it will release the drug so that is the enteric or delayed one remember not all delayed action tablets are enteric maybe it may it may take time but it, it will release at the end of the stomach only or it will release some other part so not all delayed action are enteric but all enteric actually are delayed one or are intended to produce the enteric effect remember there is a difference not all delayed are enteric the delay can be because of various reasons also but the enteric one are delayed because whatever time it will take from stomach to the intestine that will be like the transit time so 2 hours at least will be required so all the enteric are delayed but all the delayed are not enteric one so what are the polymers these are very important many times they will ask you like what are the examples of enteric coated so cap that is cellulose acetate phthalate pva polyvinyl acetate hpmc phthalate containing dicarboxylic dicarboxylic acid phthalic acid in a partially ester esterified form so these polymers been acid esters are insoluble in gastric media so these polymers they are esters remember these polymers are what so these polymers are the esters and they are insoluble in gastric media and hence they are insoluble in gastric media so this was about delayed action and enteric coated tablets now next is tablet used only in the oral cavity now we will see there are buccal and sublingual tablets means which will absorb from the buccal root and which will absorb from the sublingual root so these tablets are usually small and somewhat flat and are intended to held between cheek and teeth or in the cheek pouch on the this side that is a buccal tablet so that is a buccal cavity and which is placed beneath the tongue means below the tongue sublingual so there are two types buccal and sublingual the drug absorption from the oral cavity it will avoid first pass metabolism because it will directly go into systemic circulation without undergoing liver metabolism so the drugs uh, which undergoes liver metabolism can be given by this route to avoid first pass metabolism next is these tablets should be designed not to disintegrate now disintegration phenomena is applicable to compressed multi compressed tablet but here there there is no disintegration but to slowly dissolve once placed it should show it should slowly dissolve over a period of 15 to 30 minutes to provide effective absorption disintegration is not required with the help of saliva it will get dissolved so that is for the buccal and sublingual tablets 
नेक्स्ट आर ट्रॉचेस एंड लोसेंजेस सो दे कैन बी मेड लोसेंजेस मे बी मेड बाय कॉम्प्रेशन बट आर यूजली फॉर्म्ड बाय फ्यूजन और बाय कैंडी मोल्डिंग प्रोसेस सो दिस आर दिस इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ लोसेंजेस ट्रॉचेस ऑन द अदर हैंड आर मैन्युफैक्चर्ड बाय कॉम्प्रेशन एज अदर टैबलेट्स सो दिस आर दॉचेस एंड दे आर मैन्युफैक्चर्ड बाय कॉम्प्रेशन these two classes of tablets are designed not to disintegrate in the mouth but to dissolve or slowly over erode over a period of 30 minutes or less so this this should also not disintegrate but it should get dissolved over a period of 30 minutes or less than that next are dental cones the name itself suggests dental means to keep in the dental cavity it means like on the tooth one so why it is used because to prevent the microbial attack or something like that so dental cones are relatively minor tablet form that are designed to be placed in the empty socket after a tooth extraction whenever a tooth will be removed a uh, cavity will be there so this dental cones are placed into the cavity their usual purpose is to prevent the multiplication of bacteria in the socket there should not be any mi microbial growth so for that reason these dental cones are used and such extraction by employing a slow releasing anti antibacterial compound or to reduce bleeding by containing an astringent or coagulant you know astringent is a pro protein precipitation or a coagulant if any bleeding occurs then these dental cones they already contains astringents and coagulants so uh this bleeding can be controlled because it is a protein protein precipitation next is what are the vehicles so sodium bicarbonate sodium chloride or amino acid these are the vehicles used for the dental cones so the tablet should be formulated to dissolve or erode slowly in the presence of small volume of serum or a fluid over 20 to 40 minutes period when loosely packed in the extraction site so over the period of 20 to 40 minutes it will get dissolved now tablets administered by other route implantation the name itself suggests they are the depot tablets these are designed for subcutaneous implantation in animals or man it also provide prolonged drug effects ranging from 1 month to a year at constant drug release so if you require a therapy for a longer period of time then implantation can be done which will release uh, the drug for a month to year so once it is inserted it can release the drug from one month to a year these tablets are usually small cylindric rosette shaped forms and are typically not more than 8 mm length since you are uh, placing it subcutaneously it cannot be very uh, bigger in size so very small only you have to place a special injector utilizing a hollow needle and a plunger that plunger is known as the kern injector whatever that special injector is there that is a kern injector this may be used to administer rod shaped tablets so here you can see naltrexone so this is a 3 month implant one so it will release for the 3 months the primary application is to administration of growth hormones to food producing animals through year so generally through years Uh, of animals it is given growth or gro growth hormones are given next are the vaginal tablets uh, vaginal tablets or inserts are designed to undergo slow dissolution process and drug release in the vaginal cavity so the tablets are typically ovoid because of the shape of the vagina or pear shape to facilitate retention in the vagina so the tablets are often buffered to promote a ph favorable to the action of a given antiseptic agent so some buffers are added these buffers will resist the change in ph so clotrimazole tablet so this is the clotrimazole vaginal tablet next are the tablets used to prepare solution tablets used to prepare solution first is effervescent tablet effervescent tablet that is a disprint tablets the name itself suggests effervescence means these are used to produce the solutions these are used to produce the solution so effervescent tablets are designed to produce a solution rapidly with the simultaneous release of carbon dioxide now this is very important 
these tablets which are used to produce solution releases which gas so that is the co2 carbon dioxide is released so the tablets are typically prepared by compressing the active ingredients with mixtures of other organic acids so that it will facilitate the release of the drug so the other ingredients are citric acid or tartaric acid and sodium bicarbonate because it contains acid and base the release of carbon dioxide will takes place now when such tablet is dropped into a glass of water a chemical reaction is initiated between acid and sodium bicarbonate between acid and sodium bicarbonate to form the sodium salt of the acid and to produce carbon dioxide and water so immediately it will release but what is the disadvantage is it is extremely difficult to uh, maintain its stability because even a single drop of water will will change the tablet stability so that is the disadvantage so the disadvantage of the effervescent tablet and one reason for its somewhat limited utilization is related to the difficulty of producing a chemically stable product so this is the disadvantage for effervescent tablet next is dispensing tablet dispensing the name itself suggests it has to be given by the pharmacist or patient has to be taken so it they are intended to be added to a given volume of water by the pharmacist or the consumer the patients will add or the pharmacist will add to produce a solution of a given drug concentration so those are the dispensing tablets next are hypodermic tablets they are composed of one or more drugs with other readily water soluble ingredients other water soluble ingredients will be there and are intended to be added to sterile water or water for injection so that is about the hypodermic next are tablet triturates so tablet triturates are small usually cylindric molded or compressed tablets so the drugs employed in such products were usually quite potent potent drugs means those will have very lesser strength means more potent and they were mixed with lactose or other binders such as powdered acacia after which the mixture was moistened to produce a moldable compacted mass so that is a tablet triturate this mass is then forced into the holes of molds to make a tablet so the molds will be there they will be having certain holes so this compactable mass is then pressed into the molds to form the tablet so these are the tablet triturates so that that is all about uh, different types of tablets advantages and disadvantages in the upcoming session we will see the next part of the tablets thank you